Hi, my name is Caitlin Cahoon, and this is my home buying case study presentation. So to start off, my family is called the Young family. Now, they aren't based off true um, situations or circumstances, but they have details that might tie into future situations. So to start off, um, you have the wife and mother, Christina. She enjoys horseback riding, cycling, snowmobiling, and generally just being out in nature. She currently works as an executive assistant and is at age 26. You then have the father and husband, Caleb. He is a car enthusiast, loves adrenaline-filled activities, including snowmobiling, jousting, and enjoys playing video games. His main job is working in research and development, but he does car detailing and photography off to the side. They then have one son, age three, named Heath. And he is your typical three-year-old, with laughing, crying, running around, and asking a whole lot of questions. You then go on to their financial situation. The family brings in a generous 12000 a month between their combined jobs and are pretty well off for where they are in life so far. They have approximately sixty-five grand in savings and are debt-free. The unique factor I chose with this family is travel. Due to both the husband and the wife's job as they are through the same company, they do a lot of traveling and often have to pay for any additional activities they do there that aren't connected to the business part of the trip or if they decide to bring Heath along with them. So with the mortgage payment, with the 25% rule, is about 3000 And in a home, they're looking for four bedrooms, three bathrooms, a large kitchen and a large living room, and would enjoy having a backyard. So that brings us to the dream home. When I first looked at this, it was 549000 it has since gone lower, but we are going to stick with this number throughout the entirety of the assignment. With this, the monthly principal is 2365 It has five bedrooms, four and a half bathrooms, a large garage, and a large backyard. Some things that they enjoy with this and why they like it is that it's aesthetically pleasing. It has a fenced-off backyard, which is very good for the dogs and the children as they grow. It has garage space for both the husband and wife, and it is in good condition. They wouldn't need to renovate or add anything to it when they moved in. It also has room for growth or room for company when they come over. The next is the modest home. It had a list price of 499 grand. And that would make the monthly principal around 2164 per month. This includes four beds, two and a half bathrooms, and a small backyard. While this house is expensive and probably should have found one closer to the 15% instead of the 20%, it is still within the limits. It has enough room for growth and is located in a good area for the family. They also still have that three-car garage on the side, and while it has a small backyard, it still has enough space for the dogs and kids. Then going on to the budget for the family. In the mortgage and rent, I put the maximum payment that they would have, which is for the dream home. And throughout, there are small things that would change. At the top, you can see the salary and then the money from the side jobs that are done by the husband. And then as things change and as um, they move into the house and mortgage or utilities or transportation or things like that shift, there is some extra money put into savings or miscellaneous that can just be um, transferred and set up so it is paid correctly. We then have the family's savings plan. At the top, they were hoping to save a total of 50 grand for their emergency fund. 
This would take mm, around two years to do. And depending on what account they put it in, it could take um, more or less than that. And then down payment, they are hoping to go for that 20% at least. And if they save that from zero up at 2500 a month, it will take a considerable amount of time. They will have to decide whether they plan on using any of their 65000 savings for that, or if they want to keep it totally separate and save it from the ground up before buying their home. You then have the optimum mortgage rates for the dream home here. You On the left, you have with a 30-year and 20% down payment, and you can see the information there, including the um, APR and monthly payment. And then you have the 15-year, and it's APR and monthly payment. And then going to taxes. You can see on the left the home mortgage tax reduction and the property tax, which are both fairly expensive. But then you go to the tax liability. The tax liability without the home is around $12,275.30, while the tax liability with the home is $7,897.99. This is important to consider as it is almost cut in half when you buy that home. So it is important to see what you might want to do and where that extra money would go and whether it'd be worth it to rent or start buying that home and get that reduction. You then go to transportation. The transportation is a necessary category in the budget for this family. They need a car to get everywhere they go and can't rely on public transportation with everything they have to do. So to the right, you can see the diagram of the Toyota Camry. This is one of the three cars they have, but it is the one that is used most often and for the majority of their travel. It is also one of their most gas efficient cars, which is why it is so widely used for them. Then long-term debts. The only long-term debt this family has is tithing. This is due to the fact that both the husband and wife had their cars paid off before getting married and had a cheap place to live for the first two years of their marriage, which allowed them to save up for future expenses and pay off anything they needed to. Then both husband and wife were able to graduate college without any debt. And this let them start their careers with no long-standing payments that they needed to take care of. And then to PITA. I do apologize for the bad quality of the picture on the right, but it does show you what you need to know. So in total, it is 2356 for the dream home. And then principal and interest makes up 2065 of that. Taxes 201 and insurance is 90. Due to the fact that the couple is planning on paying at least a 20% down payment when they purchase the home, they do not have to worry about PMI, so that is not shown calculated here. Then going to the 30% rule, 36% rule. I haven't, I'm not going to go through all the math explaining it, but as you can see on the bottom, um, it is less than the 36%, which means the family can qualify for a loan on their dream house. Then the buying or renting, the pros and cons of that. Pros for buying is you get the ownership. You can renovate, you can change, you can do what you want with it. You, it is also beneficial if you plan on staying there for an extended period of time. It also gives you room to grow, or room to change and its appreciation. The cons for that is you have extra expenses, it may be difficult to sell if you do end up moving, and you might have possible expensive renovations or maintenance costs. And then to renting. The pros of that is no or less maintenance cost. It is easier to move 
and it is easier to pay off other debts while renting because the monthly cost isn't so high. You also have no or less property taxes. The cons is no ownership, which means you can't easily re renovate or change, and you don't get appreciation. For this family, they are hoping to buy a home as they have spent um, time renting before this and want to settle down for this foreseeable future, which makes sense to buy instead of rent as soon as they have the 20% or more down payment that they want. Going into total interest, as you can see on both the right and the left, I just written out, um, it shows the cost of the home minus the down payment, and then you can see the different amount of interest paid depending on the loan term. While it is, it would be much better for them to stick with the 15-year loan instead of the 30, as they wouldn't lose nearly as much in interest, um, it might hurt for them to take that higher monthly payment. So they might not have the choice and be forced to take that 30 year. And then investment and appreciation. On the left in the boxes, you can see the modest home calculation, the dream home appreciation, and investment um, calculations. In the long run, the modest home has the opportunity to help the family gain more money um, although it provides less space. So it's kind of looking which they would prefer. A better investment um, money-wise or what they really want in the home. So in conclusion, either housing option could work for the family as they were both around the same amount and in monthly payments. But it would be faster and better in the long run for the family to buy the modest home. They invested the money that they would have spent with the larger mortgage. They could um, earn more in the long run and it would be worth more with the modest home appreciation and the investment over just the dream home. If the family did buy the dream home, they would have to spend several years saving up for a large enough down payment and would maybe have to save up more than 20% to make things easier and would have to pay more each month on mortgage. They currently do not have any debts to pay off, so it wouldn't be altogether too bad for them, but it would require them to commit more of their monthly income to payments and pay a larger amount in interest. So it's kind of a give and take, but in all, it would be smarter for them financially to buy the modest home.